We're making deep fried ice cream wrapped in a phyllo pastry topped with a strawberry coulis. It's going to be delicious. And I'll also be making some cucumber ice cream, but with a special twist. Now, most ice creams is as it sounds. It's made from frozen ice. But this particular ice cream, we're going to make a custard base. And for that, we're going to need some egg yolks. And if you don't know how fresh your eggs are, you can just drop them into a glass of water. Now, this one here is fresh. You can tell because it's lying horizontally. Eggshells are porous, so the longer you leave them, the more air gets inside as the egg gradually evaporates away. So they start to gradually tip up as they get more air in. Yeah, do you want an old one? <laughs> and this is an old one. Now this egg here is revolting. <laughs> you can see it's bouncing on the surface. There's so much air inside, it won't even sink. Don't touch an egg like that, it's revolting. Bring that. Keep that out of the way. Could you wear some sugar, please? I'm using a bain-marie. Basically, it's a double boiler. But make sure that you don't let the boiling water touch the bowl, or the bowl will become too hot. Now, I've got here the egg yolks. We've separated the egg yolks from the whites. That's important, because the egg whites actually set at a lower temperature from the egg yolks. Now, if you could pour the sugar in here, please. You need to use the right amount of sugar, because it messes around with the freezing point of the ice cream. If you have too much sugar, it won't set. If you use too little, it goes rock hard. Too hard. Keep stirring this. It helps to dissolve the sugar. Single cream. Some single cream. And also, to get the fat value up, we're adding clotted cream. And clotted cream has loads That's of That's 64. Fat fat that's going in there. Amazing. Which is great, isn't it? And with ice cream, you do want to use creams that have a lot of fat in. It gives you that lovely mouth feel as it melts in your mouth. I've also got just here a vanilla pod, which I'm going to place into that. I'm going to cut this open, and here you'll be able to see hundreds, if not thousands, of tiny, tiny little vanilla seeds. Look at that. The aroma is absolutely sensational. And mm. there's a molecule in vanilla that's almost identical to the male sex hormone. That's partly why we like it so much. You might dab a little bit of that beyond my ears. It might work. <laughs> <laughs> stare. Now this is going to be stirred and cooked very, very gently for around about four to five minutes. The sugar crystals will dissolve and it'll go into a lovely creamy texture. There was a time when ice cream was only available in the summer. And that's because it was made by a company whose main business was something else entirely. Since 1786, the Walls family were in the sausage business. But this was before fridges had been dreamt of, and customers feared the meat would go off in hot weather. So sales slumped during the summer months. Some bright spark in about 1913, in the Walls business thought, why don't we sell ice cream? So for the months of May, June and July, the Walls family with their vision thought, that's the idea, we'll start making ice cream, and we can sell it around the shops where we normally sell our meat products. But it wasn't really until 1922 when the Walls family started to make it commercially available to anyone and everyone. Installing commercial refrigeration and mixing plants was really something that not too many people would have thought about doing. They were really very, very visionary of making ice cream available to the public generally. Egg and the cream are ready. And make sure that the cream isn't actually boiling, because that will heat the eggs too much and they'll go all lumpy. Now once the cream is in, just stir it very gently, so all this mixture is well incorporated. OK, Cathy, if you'd like to grab hold of the bowl and the sieve, now what I'm going to do here is pour the mixture through the sieve, and that will remove any little lumps of egg that may have formed. Also, if you've got any shell in there, and of course that vanilla pod will be collected by the sieve. Takes away the lumps. There we go, take that off you. Now I've got a metal ball here because that is a good conductor of both heat and cold. And I'm going to place the metal ball on top of some crushed ice and some water. If you want to cool it really fast, you can do something else. Do you want to just mm -hmm. get rid of that? Now if you take the temperature of the ice and water, it's around about zero degrees C. But if you tip in a load of salt, the salt messes around with the freezing point, just like the sugar did in the ice cream mixture. This reduces the freezing point and it's going down to minus four, minus five, Ooh, minus six cold, degrees, so that will cool it down even faster. Now the reason why we're cooling it down quickly is to reduce any risk of bacterial growth. And it also means we speed up the process of ice cream making. Now when you've done this for around about three to four minutes, it's cool enough to put straight into the freezer. Excellent. And make sure that there's enough space in your container for the ice cream to expand as it freezes without going over the top. Mm, usually I like to work on the bases around three quarters full only. Okay. There you go. In it goes. We're so used to it now, it's hard to imagine what a rarity ice cream once was. 
rare because it relies on one essential ingredient. In order to make ice cream, the availability of ice is absolutely critical. The secret of putting salt on ice to depress the temperature, as originally discovered by the Chinese, is how it became possible to make it in Europe. That didn't occur until the mid-1600s. And ice cream didn't become popular until they started shipping ice in in large quantities from America and then latterly from Norway. The ice was harvested from fjords, sent on ships across the North Sea and down the network of canals of industrial Britain. People completely forget. Nowadays you go into the kitchen and there's a fridge and there's a freezer. But long before that, ice was a very upmarket thing to have. And you had to have a lot of money because you had to have servants and you had to have an ice house in the grounds. If you knew how to make ice cream, it was a meal ticket for life. And you would lock the doors when you were making ice cream so that the rest of the staff would not know how you were doing it. It was a closely guarded secret. Then one man saw the demand for ice and cashed in. A Swiss Italian immigrant, Carlo Gatti, had made a living from selling chestnuts and coffee before he started marketing ice. He found a way to store it on a massive scale, under the streets of London. I'm standing in a large commercial ice well underneath central London, which was built in the 1860s before the days of artificial refrigeration, when London had a large need for ice during the summer, and it's 34 feet across, and it's 42 feet deep, because that was the distance that one poor workman fell in 1863 when one of these ice wells was being constructed. The roof they were building over the top of it collapsed. And this ice well would hold 700 tonnes of ice. That's about two small sailing ships full. With that sort of volume, there was enough ice to keep itself cold over those few months. Gatti built two ice wells into the soft London clay, which were able to store 1,400 tonnes of ice at a time. So a readily available and cheap supply was established and delivered straight to the customer's door. And this, in turn, made ice cream much easier to get hold of. The wealthy middle class, when they started having ice cream, it was there to impress your friends. If you served ice cream or you served sorbet, you were the talk of the town. And in 1885, there was only one person to turn to if you wanted to make ice cream. Ice, ice, Mrs Marshall was unquestionably responsible for the availability of ice cream to the upper middle classes. She was a professional cook. She wrote cookery books. She did amazing demonstrations all over the country. The Americans have always claimed they invented the ice cream cone. Well, we finally knocked that on the head uh, because Mrs. Marshall was writing about putting ice creams in edible cones in 1888. Mrs. Marshall did a number of very important things in the history of ice cream. One of them was she developed one of the finest ice cream making machines that was ever invented. Most ice cream machines are tall. Hers were very shallow and very wide, so they freeze very fast. It was a shallow wooden bucket in which you put salt and ice. There's a handle on the top. You turn the handle around and the chamber goes round, but the paddle stays still. You can make it in Mrs. Marshall's machine in anything from sort of six to 12 minutes. The ice and salt cool the chamber down, the ice cream forms on the inside of it, and the paddle that remains still scrapes it off. She sold an incredible range of ice cream molds, because being rare, you wanted to make it look as exciting as you could, so you put it in all sorts of fancy shapes. She was extraordinary. She was a one-woman industry. Apart from selling the equipment to make ice cream, the machinery and the freezers to freeze it solid after it's been in the machine, she was running a complete organization in the days when it was very unusual for women to run companies of that size. You can't beat a sports car. Amazing. What a plonker.
Miss Marple, the victim is a bird. I'm very fond of partridge. Kiss my face. That was classic intercourse. Just carry on building the house. You can't buy moments like this. Nor percent interest, low APR, and it looks great. You get so much more than mint card, Steve. You've got to have a heck of a reason not to have one. No, trust me, I'd love to. It's just the name Mint conjures up bad memories. So if you'd just like to sign here, Mr. Yakamoto, we're all done. The contract! <laughs> Is that Wilkins writing bareback on the word Mint? Yes, sir. Tell him he's fired. Get more, get mint. You'd need a seriously good reason not to. She surrendered to the seductions of the rainforest and suddenly was taken to a place she had never been before, immersed in ylang ylang, yes. ginger, passion flower. Yes. But she was not alone. Dazzled by the sensuous beauty of her hair, he whispered gently in her ear. Where are my socks? In the drawer. Next to your loincloth. New Herbal Essences Rainforest Flowers. Unbottle your wildest fantasies. Herbal Essences.